guys, it's Roseanne White, and I'm here today to talk to you about fall prevention. And it's Self-Care Awareness Month, but specifically this week, September 18th to September 22nd, is Fall Prevention Week. So I thought I would post a uh, social media live to talk about fall prevention with some of the Life Pro products. So welcome, everybody. Um, I'm still here in California and um, be here for another week or so, and I actually 10 days. So I thought, again, that it'd be a great time with self-care month still in full swing here. Besides, it's fall prevention week. And uh, Life Pro has given us so many great tools to help us get stronger, more fit, to recover from injuries, um, to rehab knees, hips, shoulders, all those things. But I think it was, it's really important today that we talk about uh, balance. It's a funny thing, you know, we, we don't often fully notice it until we lose it. And then like anything else in fitness, speed, power, and strength, balance can be developed and enhanced. But it's not something you find, it's something you create. So today I thought we would talk about balance, or I would talk about balance a little bit. Normally when I come on lives, I like to go right into a workout and, and try to give you some ideas on how to use the Life Pro products for your workouts. But I'm going to spend part of this beginning of this session to talk about balance. Um, I've done many professional presentations on balance for my peers, um, as well as clients from country clubs clubs and things like that. I've given the workshops. And, and today I want to share some of my knowledge and my experience with balance training for you and how we're going to use that information on how you're going to train using the Aeroflex and the Horizon Trainer. Now I will go through movement as well, and I'll put that in the chat or in the comments um, on our social media so you have my programming but I'd like to really spend some time talking about balance. And if you have any questions, put them in the chat. I'll try to answer them for you as we go along. Um, but welcome, everybody. Uh, I, I don't know about you, but um, balance has been something that, for me personally, I've worked on all the time. Um, I had a uh, balance accident when I was 14 years old, going for a layup shot in basketball, and I kind of came down, and I couldn't catch my balance and sprained an ankle. And that was when I was 14, you know, years later, now uh, I was probably just in my early sixties. And, um, you know, I was walking down the street, kind of tripped over something. I'm wearing my little clogs or heeled shoes and flat, flat on my face. Sometimes you just can't catch your balance, but it's something, like I said, you don't find you create good balance. So what is balance? It's the most innate human function we have. It's our ability to stay upright. It's our ability to control our body as it moves while we're coordinating two or, coordinating two or three parts of our body with control and efficiency. So balance is, is both a movement skill that enhances techniques, but it's also a conditioning element in our life that we can always improve. And it's it's key to all functional movements. Um, you've seen many of my workouts where I'll be stepping on a platform or sidestepping here and there. And, you know, you don't even have to be on, a, on something to use work on balance. You don't need a prop or you don't need a tool. Um, but it's pretty critical for all our functional movements besides if you're playing any sports. And I'm not talking about, you know, um, intense sports like uh but I'm talking about things like golf. If you're a hiker, um, if you are uh, canoeing, if you're in a boat, you know, ba balancing while you're getting on a boat or off a boat or into a canoe, um, it's invaluable to prevent falling as we age. So I don't know if you knew this, but we're born with two innate fears. The first fear is of loud noises. And the second fear is of falling and the second one is the leading cause of accidents and un unintentional injuries and deaths worldwide. So that's pretty heavy stuff. So for older population, losing balance and falling really poses a serious health problem. And maybe some of you have already experienced that. 
So those 65 and plus, and that would include me, I'm not less than two weeks, I'll be 66, dang. But there's an estimate of 37 million people over the age of 65 of other health, otherwise healthy community-dwelling adults fall at least one time a year. And there's over 3 million people in that population of 37 million that are in the emergency department due to falls. Maybe you're one of them or maybe you know somebody. So it's super important, important as, um, as we get older that we practice a program that incorporates balance in all aspects of our fitness training, whether you're doing some cardiovascular training or resistance training or flexibility training. So you don't have to be 65 to lose your balance. Like I said, I, I lost, I can remember many times, but two specific times that I didn't expect it, lost my balance and had an injury because of it. So um, you might have other factors that are causing challenge in your balance. Maybe it's a birth defect. Maybe you just got worn out joints. <laughs> Maybe you suffer vertigo. Um, maybe you've had some surgeries or you're getting ready for surgery and you just don't have that stability in your hip and knee or ankle. But um, I want to address one thing before I go further, and that's the fear of falling. And it's a, 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 actually a phobia called bas basophobia. Basophobia. It's the thinking. It's the thinking. The fear of falling is more intense than the fear of being robbed of financial stress or illness. I mean, that's how intense this fear is. And um, for people who have this phobia, basophobia, their perception of how bad their balance is. And I can tell you, I have worked and I work with clients, active aging, but I have clients that are so afraid of falling. Um, they're just so afraid of it. And we have to really talk that through. So before we train, you and I train, we have to put it in our heads that we are working to improve our balance, to get better at balance. But um, this phobia is, um, this fear actually increases the likelihood of incident and accident of falling. And um, I'm, sadly, I had a client just a couple of weeks ago who I trained virtually and when she's in Chicago and when she's in Arizona, she trains with me, who has... Um, who fell in her bathroom, lost her balance, and broke uh, broke a rib, fractured a rib. So, I mean, it happens, and it happens at a lot of different ages. So this is why we train for balance, for confidence in the ability to respond to a real fall. So there's two types of balance when we're doing balance training. There's a static balance. That's the kind where you hold and you try to remain motionless. And then the dynamic balance with, where it's the ability to stand on one or both legs while moving some other part or parts of your body. And then we can add on in that dynamic balance, holding, adding a hold or a stop or a turn, a movement pattern. We can add um, a weight, you know, a resistance band pull. We can add things. And so examples of that would be like uh, the bottom of a skater's hop, you know, so, someone who's like skiing or skating, that kind of position of stopping with one leg up uh, or both legs. So to go further on this, there's four, I think it's, I call it the four P's of perfect balance that you need to have. And it's posture, it's proprioception, programming, and practice. And those four P's are pretty critical for you and I to have good balance or to be able to catch our balance or to sustain balance, to have better balance. So posture is the pinnacle of balance. It's the most critical part of it. So simply stated, posture in practicing balance is the awareness and alignment of your body. And you've, you've seen me, you've um, heard me talk about this. Let me grab something right here. Uh, oops, my little chair. So, you know, I always use a towel. This happens to be a dish towel, but... I always start my clients, and I want to start you out with taking a towel behind your neck and just pulling your chin back and getting your head over your shoulders. This, guys, is like the number one thing I see with very much in the active aging adult community. And you know what? It's happening now with younger people. It's happening because we have our cell phones. We're looking down. We're texting. We're always looking down. We're looking down at our computers. 
but I see this forward head position a lot. And I've done other uh, lives for Life Pro uh, and other, like I said, other presentations where I've had a bowling ball on a stick and I've passed it around the room to um, let people realize your head is like about the weight of a bowling ball. Let's say six, eight, 10 pounds, depends how big your head is, but you've got this weighted object on the top of your spine. So unless you're aware of your posture, balance and balance training will be less effective. So that awareness about the, uh, the mass, our head over our shoulders, your shoulders over our hips, and that base of support, the distance between the feet or one foot, it's all proportionate to your awareness and how you're going to balance. So when we practice better posture, and it might be difficult, you might find that you're super tight, um, you may have kyphosis, um, you may have neck injuries or things that cause you this hunched feeling. You know, first of all, we just got to get you to lift your heart. I don't even tell people pull your shoulders back. That's not the right cue. I want you to think about it. put your hand on your on your collarbones and lift, lift your collarbones up, and it's just going to bring your head, your ears over your shoulders. So that's a super important practice, and you can practice that anytime. It's not even when you're practicing balance, but you practice putting your head over your shoulders, and then shoulders over hips, hips over feet, and then you're going to have that remembered reaction of when you lose your balance, you pick your head up, you know, drop it down, because you're, once you take that bowling ball up and over, you're going down. So we, we have these remembered reactions when we are in imbalance to, to our training situation. We're trying to create a different experience on how we catch ourselves. So it becomes almost automatic. So efficient standing posture is going to be your prerequisite to cultivate the perception of balance in body position, whether you're static or moving. So also what that means is the alignment of things. So when we think about this, I'm going to stand up. I hopefully you can see me. I don't have my big screen yet, but when you think about, oops, I almost lost my balance there. <laughs> your legs, your knees, you're not going to see me. I got to move my screen down. We want to look at this relationship of ankles, knees, hips, shoulders, head, right? And we have curves in our spine. We have our shoulders, arms, our abs, our chin, our eyes, our focus. So our joints are very, very mobile, right? Oh, I keep losing my, losing my seat. It's a tiny little chair I'm sitting on. It's kind of weird. It's on a three-legged chair. Speaking of balance, I better be balanced on this. So your feet are stable, right? Your ankles are mobile. Your knees are a stabilizer. Your hips are a mobilizer. Your lumbar spine is stable. Your thoracic spine is mobile. Your scapothoracic joint is stable. And your glenohumeral joint, your shoulder is mobile. I know it's a little anatomy, and I'm kind of a nerd there. But, but we're always trying to maintain that perfect posture alignment at all times, whether we're mobile or stable. Okay, so that's the first piece. The second one is proprioception, and this is pretty important too. It's actually, it's very critical because it's your ability of your body to know where it is in the environment. So we put you on vibration platforms, right? And all of a sudden the earth is, <laughs> the, you've got an earthquake under your feet and your proprioceptors are going to town trying to figure out how to stay stable. So that's why I love vibration training for just if nothing else that. And I would put a client on a vibration platform and just they're like, whoa, let's just try to find where they're at. So proprioception is the ability to know where you are in your environment. That means the mind and body work together as one unit to keep you moving freely without having to think about it or look, about, look at it. Your proprioceptors are always working. So it's a function of the nervous system and it's kind of known as our sixth sense. So we have the proprioception in the muscles, in the bones, the hands, the feet, the connective tissue, and it alerts the body when you're out of balance, like, oh, we're going down, you know, and like everything is an alert at that point. So how does proprioception really work? Basically, it's the balance centers of the eyes and the ears 
and the feet. They're sending signals back and forth, helping to sense imbalance and trying to correct posture as they're activated by stimulus. That vibration platform, that wobble of the arrows, um, the aeroflex, the instability of the horizon balance trainer. So the ears, eyes, and feet are trying to work together, trying to figure out, okay, there's an ex unex unexplained terrain here. There's a sudden change in our movement. Uh, maybe there's an impulsive move of a, a, a catching a weight or a ball. So there's actions in our canals of our ears that detect this abnormal tipping of the head in relation to gravity. And that sends signals in your nervous system. So when you lose your balance, the brain sends signals to, uh, and instructions to the muscles and bones and how and when to react. So there's specialized nerve endings in the body's joints and muscles that communicate this information to your brain about the different positions that they're in and tell your body how fast your body's moving. So I don't know about you, but I have clients that always want to look down at their feet. Like that's going to help them by looking at their feet. And that really doesn't do it. It's feeling. And I think of our feet. Um, you know, we've got all those uh, sense, senses in our feet. That's why we like to do barefoot vibration training to um, feel these antennas, the little toe, the second, the middle, the, the big toe, to feel, to feel. And when we wear shoes, and this is just my personal opinion, the big shoes that are like um, hocus and stuff like that, we kind of lose that sense of feeling of our toes. So if, as much as you can barefoot training, I recommend it. Now, today, when I'm going to be on the Aerostep, I will have uh, shoes on. But when I go on the balance trainer, I kind of like to go barefoot, the Horizon Balance Trainer, because I can get my toes to work more. And on my vibration plate, I'd like to go on with, uh, with bare feet just to get that feeling, get those toes to work. So that's why proprioception is why we train for balance at any age. We have to keep those signals working quickly, quickly, quickly. And the more we work them, the contract and relaxed messages our body's getting helps to, our nervous system to report back and that we don't lose that um, slow reaction time. And it happens as we get older, we get slower and our reactions go um, tend to be slower. So Practice balance for just the sheer sake of your proprioceptors. So um, this way your brain can understand where all the rest of the body parts are without having a look at your hands or your feet. Okay, so that's the second one. I know this is a lot, guys, and I, I, I thank you for bearing with me on this, but I felt uh, my heart, I was really, uh, in my heart felt like it was important that we talk about this the reason for balance training and for you to understand what it's all about. It's just not... Put, picking one foot up and just hanging out there. I want you to understand those four things, posture, proprioception, and programming. So programming is the third, uh, practice is the fourth. So in programming, what does that mean? That's a method, a plan, a protocol. And you, you can use no equipment or a variety of props. And that's why we're going to use the Aeroflex today. And I will do some on the horizon balance trainer as well. Um, but we want to have a method to to uh, integrate a protocol so we can practice static balance training. And that has to do with posture and strengthening our muscles, postural muscles to balance. And then we have dynamic balance and that's where we're moving in a balanced pose for reaction and recovery, reaction and recovery. So um, I like to start with static because my famous line to everybody is, Stand with your feet together. You might want to try it now because you don't need anything. Stand up with your feet together. I don't care if you're barefoot or not. And keep your arms at your side. Align your spine. Stand nice and tall. Then close your eyes. Wow, that's a game changer, right? Your proprioception of your eyes is gone. And now you're going to feel the sway. Now, if it's too scary to close your eyes, and it might be because all of a sudden you've decreased your base of support. But if you stand there, you're going to start feeling your body sway. And, you know, I live in Arizona normally, and we have these big saguaros. They're huge. And you, if you, you think, man, they just stick in the ground with these little tiny root systems. But the root systems really, 
it's shallow, but it's everywhere. Like there's, there's all these little roots going out to hold this big, massive uh, uh, cacti, but it, they sway. They do move a little bit. They're always swaying. So be aware of that. Make friends with the sway. Don't freak when all of a sudden you start moving. Like just notice, do you sway more to the left? Do you sway more to the right? Do you sway back or forward? And that could be a byproduct of where your head is. If you tend to be kind of tilted to one side, you might sway. Or if your head's forward, you might sway. Or if you're, you're, you're sticking your belly out, you relax your muscles, you might sway back. So your posture goes into that proprioception and gets you to find out where you're in space. So when you develop the awareness of the natural amount of sway you have first, then you'll notice it's always going to be consistent when you move or don't move, when you're in dynamic or static balance postures. So this is all, the sway is all generated by the nervous system. And it's, it's kind of like on the vibration platform. It's the oscillation. It's unconscious. It's a, a series of impulses that charges muscles to, to help you remain upright. So don't freak when you sway. Embrace the sway. <laughs> okay. It's critical to training success. So we're going to start with the ankle when we do our training. And that's the first place that your body likes to adjust to imbalances. It's the ankle. So if you find you have tight ankles, that's the first place we want you to work is getting those ankles to, to, to move or to be a little more mobile. You know, our ankle plants and plantar flex, dorsiflex, you invert and evert. So there, it has some movement in it and we need to have a healthy joint, uh, ankle joint. And so we've got the squat wedge pro, we have the incline X ways to stretch. If your calf muscle are tight, it's going to affect your ankles. If you've got plantar fasciitis, it's going to affect your ankles, right? So there might be issues in your tissues that you may need to use other Life Pro products to help you to heal or to get movement or blood flow, whatever that means. So you have good awareness of ankle movement. That's what separates an intermediate, a basic intermediate and an advanced student in training is how much awareness of ankle movement they have. Critical. I do a lot of ankle movement when I'm teaching Pilates and therapeutic yoga, and you can move your ankles all the time. So the next part of balance training when we talk about programming is, is that anytime we have a position, you want to hold it for 15 to 30 seconds. Okay, this is about programming. It's cheat proof. You either can hold a position or you can't. <laughs> that's the bottom line. You can either do it or you can't. And that's okay. So when you're when you're working on your, your own exercise programming, you want to build your endurance. It might be endurance of your ankles, the stabilization of your spine, your abdominal connection, your shoulder connection. You want to build up the strength in your body to reduce the potential of injury or falling. So that's just in our static balancing. Now in dynamic balancing, you know, we want to practice in dynamic, meaning we're moving while we're practicing balance, if that makes any sense. Because that's going to give you a keener sense of, of where you are and the ability to recover should you lose your balance. Um, we, we're pretty, or if you're in, in, in an unpredictable, unpredictable place. Um, think about this. Um, if you are able to have your body interact with your core, your, your posture muscles, you should be your hips, you should be able to find that whether you move your head, that's going to be a dynamic balance, moving your head, moving your shoulders, that's dynamic balance. You know, it doesn't have to be that crazy. It's just moving things instead of being very stationary, right? Um, in the beginning of balance static, I'll tell someone just stare into space, find a fixed point. That's static. But when we're talking about dynamic, it's like, okay, now you're standing there. Now look to the left, look up, look down, look to the side. That's dynamic. That's how simple the training really can be. So various head positions are going to really change the equilibrium in your system. Then you add stimulus under your feet, like the, um, the Aeroflex with the half moon shapes or the uh, dome shape, we add those little stimulus to balance and then things are changing, right? 
So we have to think about what are all our spine stabilizers. And then we add our arms to it. You know, then we add weights to it. So we can really keep adding the programming. But um, when I do this, this session of training for you, I'm going to explain that we're going to be working in four planes of motion in our programming. You know, our body, the, the plane of motion of forward and backward, okay? Because think about it. When we bend, we, um, like we bend over the tire shoe. We reach up to grab a box um, from a shelf, or we've got two-handed throwing. You know, those are what places where we can lose balance. If you're, that second one is side uh, bending, our frontal plane, which divides the body from front and back. So it's abduction, adduction. Say you're holding your grandchild on your hip or you're carrying a backpack on your side. Those things change your balance from side to side, right? And then we have the um, transverse plane where we're rotating um, uh, rotation. And that's for you, those of you that might be playing pickleball, playing tennis, or maybe you're just moving dishes from the sink to the dishwasher, or you're transferring groceries from the car to the cart. You know, you, you're moving in a plane where you can just, you know, you can lose it very, very quickly if you're not aware. Like a baseball swing, you have to have good balance. And golf swing, I have a lot of golfers that fall back on their heel or they fall frontward. I mean, it's just because they're not in there, they're not able to balance. And then the last one is diagonal, our diagonal plane. So that combines one or more motions like um, an overhead reach, bending down to pull something out of a wall and plugging into it or plug it into a, a wall plug um, or the golf club swing. That's more the diagonal. Okay, one more thing to go, and we're going to be going into practice. So I know I've talked a lot today, and so the first half hour is going to be like, I'm going to talk about, say, as lecture, and then the, the rest of it will be training. So the last P is practice. So posture, proprioception, programming, and practice. Consistent practice promotes the increase of your proprioception, your core coordination, your muscular strength, and your ability to sense imbalances to react quicker when balance is lost. So I can't emphasize enough. Practice, practice, practice. And it's little snippets of practice. You don't have to be practicing balance. I'm going to give you 10 different exercises. Yeah, that's a lot, 10. But I'd like you to practice two to four of these movements every day. And it might take you five or 10 minutes. And considering there's uh, 1,440 minutes in each day, if you can carve out 10 minutes to practice balance, especially if you have that fear of falling, you can do it. I've got clients practicing balance where they're brushing your teeth. But if you've got the Aerostep or the Aeroflex or the Horizon Balance Trainer, keep it handy. Don't tuck it away. Keep it handy so you can practice. Because remember, we want to look at how you react to the imbalance that's created, how you become aware of your skills to catch your balance. But be sure we don't compromise safety, okay? If you're really hyper vigilant and you're really still in that fear place, I honor that, okay? I get that because I have a lot of clients where I have to kind of put my hands near them so they know they're safe. And that might be you and that's okay. Be near a wall, be near a, um, have a post, be near a table. That's fine. But practice is going to give you um, progress, not perfection, progress. Okay. There's really, I've, I've done a lot of different research. It's not known how much practice is necessary for su substantial balance because it ranges from person or varies from person to person. But if you keep adding it, maybe you're on the treadmill, uh, you're on your um, uh, Pacer Mini, you know, and you let go and you just walk with an unstable uh, surface, you know, a moving surface. That's practicing balance. You know, maybe you're um, on your vibration platform and you pick up one leg. I mean, there's ways to practice all the time, but you want to add it to your routines. And just train to fatigue. If you find that you keep losing your balance, take a break. Maybe you're fatigued, okay? And um, make sure, 
again, make sure you have stabilization of your spine and your trunk um, as much as you can. There's going to be times when I'm going to have you moving, but I want to make sure you have control. You have, you're able to stabilize. And the most important thing, note your head and neck position when you're so when your balance is the best, note that. Where's your head and neck? Chances are it's in the right place. If you lose it, if your head starts coming forward, there's a chance you might lose your balance as well. Okay, so um, again, my recommendations for balance training, I'm going to say it's every day. Um, at minimum, three to six times. So if you got seven days in the week, three to six days a week, practice. Uh, for what I'm going to show you, I'm, I'm going to say... 10 reps minimum up to 20. Okay. Take four of the exercises and work with them. Okay. And we want to, I like to work one side, then the other side. Okay. Let's really work that one side and kind of fatigue that one side, then go to the other side. You may notice between uh, week uh, four to six. Okay that you're going to be building up more strength, better balance, you're maintaining better balance, and then you could add a little bit more dynamic range in it. You can start adding some weight training in it, some resistance band training in it. You might start messing around with this on your vibration platform where the ground is moving, so to speak. But um, for so for right now, I would say, you know, uh, definitely go on the Aeroflex because it's a nice stable stable platform and it's a few inches off the ground that's what i like about that you know there's something about being flat on the ground that we feel safe as soon as i elevate my clients and you might be one of them as soon as i put you up a few inches and all of a sudden the ground is a little bit lower your proprioceptors are going wow you know i might fall off even though it's a few inches that that thought is there um you know think about this when you walk you're practicing balance, one foot up, then the other, one foot and the other. But when you're going up steps, there's a little bit of a change of position. So that changes your head, your shoulders and everything. It's, it's kind of interesting how this all comes, comes uh, together. So, um, you know, if you feel like you've got pretty good balance, I honor that. Still practice at least twice a week and go from the simplest to the most extra um, difficult. And if you feel like you're advanced, like, man, I got good balance, then I would say try the most difficult of the exercises first, six to eight reps, and then go to the lightest. That's, that's just my ideas for programming that I suggest to people. But start where you're at, okay? Um, come into your training with an attitude that, not the attitude of, oh, I have bad balance, because you'll get more bad balance. The attitude of, I'm working to have better balance. I'm working to create better balance. So you're creating a new thought, a new feeling, a new awareness. And then with that, you'll have, you'll come in feeling successful and get real building your confidence up. Okay. So I know I've talked for over a half hour. I hope this was helpful for you. If you have any questions, type them in the chat um, or private message me. I know I also have uh, other um, on the vibration platform and, and other um, other videos uh, lives that we've done balance on. So let's go ahead and start our, our whole session. Now I'm going to change cameras. So give me a second here. If you don't mind, I'm going to um, change my camera and get you so I, you can see me in, see me a little bit better here. Okay, we are going to be on this camera. And there we go. Yep, see how, I, voila, my room is bigger. Okay. So a lot of this, guys, you're not going to see me. Um, you're not going to see my face, and that's okay. You don't need to. I want you to see my legs. Now, I've got the arrow stuff here, right? Now, I've got it with the both legs on. I'm going to take the legs off. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to work with the, um, I call it, the moons, the half moons, okay? So we're gonna put these moons on, half moons on. Make sure they're nice and stable. Because 
because this is going to be about your ankles first. Okay. Now, a little tip for you if you, um, you know, I didn't put my ear pods on. I hope you guys can hear me. I hope it's not too echoey. So if you are feeling very unstable with this, let me turn this, bring this camera down a little bit more because you don't need to see me, okay? There. If you are feeling a little unstable, get some towels or books, okay? And you can put them, you can roll them up. I'm just gonna show you, I'm not gonna do this, but I'm gonna take these towels and I'm gonna roll them up. And you can literally put them on the sides, okay? So that when you step on, you have very little movement, okay? It's not so intense, okay? That's the first tip I'm gonna give you. But if you feel pretty good about the movement, it's a little deeper movement side to side, then that's fine, okay? You can start there. Now, I'm gonna suggest you do about 10 reps of each, then we're gonna add on. So you have two choices. And this is pretty important. I don't think anyone might have, you might never have heard this. But if you get your squishy ball and you go ahead and you step on your half moon and you put it between your thighs, then you're going to feel this inner thigh connection and you will use more abdominal. And you're going to find that if you squeeze together, that you're going to be able to find the center a little bit more and hold it. Make sure you breathe. Remember your head placement here. You can't see my head, but I want my head to be right over my shoulders, shoulders over hips, and I'm, I'm gonna be able to find that center. So this might be one prop that you're gonna use. The other option is to take your Life Pro band because not everybody may find that the ball is right for them, okay? So take your band and try it this way, okay? So what this is doing is helping with my ankles, but I'm also connecting my hips. And actually, it's so interesting that I'm finding this band is very helpful for me to keep in better balance as well. So you're gonna just go side to side. You can go 10 times, I'm not gonna do a full 10, I just want to show you methods, okay? I have soft knees here when I do this. And I'm having my toes spread wide in my feet, in my shoes. Now, from side to side is our first angle. And then we can go front to back. So in this case, again, you could have towels or books if you're really kind of a little intimidated by how this platform moves. And I have a, just a little bit of resistance on this band here. I can step a little bit wider. Keeping, I want to keep my ankles and my knees right in line with my hip sockets. But I'll tell you what, you're going to be so surprised when you find that using the band may help you to stay more upright on that dome. So let's face it. You're never gonna stay upright for long because it's not a flat surface. But if you think about zipping up from pubic bone to heart to head, you may find, so you might find that works. And then same thing, take off the band and then try the ball. Will it work on carpeting? Yes, it will work on carpeting. Normally, I, um, it's funny because you probably hear this clicking. I normally, when I'm doing my virtual lives for you guys, I'm normally in my home studio that has carpeting and it does work. But you know what I like to do also? I like to put a piece of a, um, a mat underneath. I think that that's a little bit more helpful. So try it on the carpet. And then if not, try it, put a yoga mat underneath you. 
But I'll tell you, there's such a world of difference when you have this inner thigh or outer hip connection than rather than just free fall, uh, free. It actually, I have that sense of what my legs felt like holding the ball, and I have a much more awareness in my joints. Okay, so that's the first way to warm up your ankles. Then we're going to take these half domes off, or half moons I call them. <laughs> And then we're going to put the dome on, okay? So we're going to pop this dome in place. And then this is where we get a little more ankle mobility. And right from the get-go, guys, I'm just going to go ahead and put the ball between my legs. So I'm going to step on one side. I'm going to put that ball between my thighs. And then I'm going to start front. Let me see if I can get there. Front. Stand nice and tall. Keep the abs pulled in. Side. Back side and I'm constantly keeping connection I'm looking for a smooth circle here so I want to feel my little toe to my big toe big toe to little toe outer heel inner heel inner heel outer heel so say that to yourself of what you're trying to feel and you're going to find when you do this you're going to start rolling around in a circle not only in your ankles but you're going to, your body's going to go in a 360 degree rotation. And then once you go all the way around, reverse the circle and you're going to come upright. Okay. Again, my, right now I'm looking all around with my head. You might find a place to focus, but I like to start incorporating hand movements while I'm doing this. I might reach up and down. I'm moving my arms around and I just want to get all this, as much movement as I can while I'm getting my ankles, inner thighs, my abs, everything's working, okay? So that's the half moon and the dome. You can also do your, your band, okay? So I'm not going to show you that one because you have the idea. These are going to be considered, let me get my camera here. These are going to be considered your warm-ups, okay? Oops. These are going to be considered your warm-ups to get your ankles moving. Because remember I talked about, we want to make sure we can plantar flex, dorsiflex, ever, invert, because our ankles are going to send signals to our brains. So, grab a sip of water. And uh, now we're going to put this arrow step on. The, um, with the feet. Okay, so I'm going to take my dome off. Side. And as I said, I will go ahead and give you guys my notes on the training so you can practice this. Can you see me okay? Okay. I'm going to make sure you can see me okay. My, the, the floor. I'm not concerned about me. You don't need to see me. I want to make sure you can see the floor. Okay, that's the main thing. Okay, here we go. I am going to do just one side, all right? I'm going to pick one side. I'm going to use my left side to demonstrate everything. Know that you're going to do everything on the other side as well. So the first thing we're going to do is stand on the step with feet together. When I'm doing this, I just want to stand there, okay? Now that you stood there, I want you to turn your head to the left, to the center, to the right. Do this slowly a few times and get used to feeling the connection of your legs, making sure your alignment. You might put that towel behind your neck, okay? And then once you've got it, now I want you to close your eyes. And trust me when I tell you, I'm closing my eyes and you might see me swaying and wiggling a little bit. And that's okay. This is the important part. This is where I want you to embrace the sway. Notice if you're swaying more to the right, the left. Can you feel your toes? Can you feel the heels? Can you feel the thighs connecting, the top of the head? This part is really important to close your eyes. Now I got my eyes open. I'm going to come off. I see it. Let's see. Good. Oh, good. You can't see me. Good. Okay. So that's standing together, standing there. Feet side by side, eyes closed. Don't freak out. Just breathe. 
and check your alignment, okay? Because you want to embrace that sway and really notice. Now, from there, we're going to go into the next, that's number one. Two is tandem. So what we're going to do is we're going to go one foot on and then the other. So I'm going to do, my left leg's going to be back, my right leg's going to be forward, okay? And i got to remember when I go the other side. So tandem means, actually, I told you I was going to do everything on the left leg, so I'll do the left leg forward, okay? Now, I am tandem, all right? One long line. Once you're there, eyes are open, and you're going to see me swaying, okay? This is, <laughs> this is the truth. I can feel a little shaking in my back hip. Um, I can talk about my injuries, like that's the reason, but it doesn't matter. Right now, my right ankle is working like crazy in my hip to figure out how to do this. Okay, now you're going to look to the left. Pause, breathe, look forward. Look to the right. Come back to center. Do that a couple times, okay? Do that a couple times to the left. Standing nice and tall. Center, right, center. Actually, I said a couple times. Whoa, do it. I'd like you to do it 10 times, okay? Left, right, left, right, 10 times. This is practice. Remember, you're not going to zip through all these. We, try, we want to make sure that we're working. Everything's going to be working stabilizers. Now, when you get really good at that, then I'm not going to um, do this one too long because I will fall. I know. I'm saying, look, at, look they just said I'm going to fall. I'm going to close my eyes. Whoa. You can see <laughs> my whole body is kind of freaking out. So I'm going to just soften my eyes and Closing my eyelashes, I could almost, I haven't lost my sense of sight totally. Whew, okay. Guys, that one is crazy. As soon as I close my eyes, everything went crazy. And it might happen with you, but the more you practice it, practice it 10 times. Open your eyes, kind of soften them, okay? You're going to feel this, wow, big in your hips, okay? And that's a good thing. My, my right hip needs it. Okay, that's number two. The next one is number three, a single leg, okay? So it's the left leg's going to be on. I'm going to come on. Make sure it's in the center here. I'm not, you don't need to look at your feet. You want to feel. That right leg can always touch the step as you need it, but I like to hang out, okay? And then we're just going to stand here. Now, you can keep staring forward and see if you can hold this for about 15 seconds or so. Breathe into it. You're going to start feeling some fatigue in your leg, and that's fine, okay? You see how my ankle's moving around a lot. Breathe into it. Breathe, breathe, breathe. After about 15 seconds, come on down. Second part of number three. Come on up. Find your balance. Once you have it, look to the left. Come back to center. Pause. Look to the right. Come back to center, pause, do that about 10 times. Okay, I can tell you right now, my ankle is going wow, oh wow, oh wow, and that was number one. Okay, so take a little break. It's okay. Remember, once you hit fatigue, you stop. Okay, this is training. Now, if you get really, really solid on this, you, you go ahead and you close your eyes. And once I close my eyes, wow, it's, it's just so fascinating. The more I practice closing my eyes, the more my proprioceptors kick in. And breathing. I did mention that. Make sure you breathe. Yeah. It'll calm me down. Okay. So that was number three. All right. Next, number four, single leg star. Okay. So what that means, still the left leg. Okay. I'm going to come on up. So my star means I'm going to bring my leg forward. That's, I'm going to call that 12 o'clock. 2 o'clock, or actually 1 o'clock, 3 o'clock. doesn't have to be far. My hands are on my hips. I'm just on a diagonal back, and then all the way. So I'm going to swing forward 1, and then 2, and then 3, and then 4, and then straight back 5. I would like you to do that 10 times. Front, diagonal, side, back diagonal, and straight back. Okay? 
Shake out that leg. Woo-hoo. Okay, so that's number four, single leg star. Number five, single leg reach. Okay, so I'm going to step up. And what I want to do, I'm going to show you this from the side here so you can see. Okay, I'm standing up straight. I'm going to hip hinge forward. My leg is straight. Soft knee bend. Doesn't be big. Come back. I'm going to hip, hip hinge back. Okay, so my leg goes back and my leg goes forward. Always find center, back, head up, and then forward, okay? Work up to 10 reps on that. Yeah, that was three and I got pretty fatigued, okay? I'm gonna move on on this, guys, because it, again, you stop the video, do your reps, take a little break, and then repeat, okay? So that was your single leg reach, front and back. This is still part of number five. Single leg reach, side to side. I'm penduluming, penduluming. Toe out, toe in. Whoa. Toe out and toe in. Okay? So that's that little side to side, okay? I had toe out. I cross center to toe in. The third part of single leg reach is rotation, okay? So I'm gonna have my foot on the side. Oh, I take that back, that's something else. Hold on, okay. So my leg is in the center. I'm gonna rotate forward and back. My hips turn forward, whoa. It's gonna be little and back. I'm making a little semicircle, front and back, forward and back. That's only three reps. <laughs> I'm asking for 10, I'm asking for a lot. Okay, number six, okay, there's 10 moves, guys. Remember, you don't have to do every one of them every day. Do three or four and break it up, okay? Next one. Single leg reach, adding a bent knee. So let me show you from the side what that means. Before my leg was straight, right? Now I'm gonna bend my knee. See that bent knee? I'm gonna go, my head goes back, my leg comes forward. I'm gonna hinge forward like I'm bending over, kicking back. Forward and back. I'm going to show you what this looks like with my head. Probably at this point, this is important for you to see as well. Yeah, you still can see me good. Okay. Because this posture is pretty important here. Okay. So I'm standing. My knee is bent. Okay. I'm going to hinge. I keep my head over my shoulder in line with my spine. And then I bring my head back up. My knee is still bent. And then I tip my head back and bring my leg forward. And then come back, okay? See that? It's not big, but I'm not letting my head lead. I'm letting my torso lead. So that's our single leg reach, adding a bent knee, okay? So I just want to do the forward on that. Then I'm going to do the same thing. Back, I'm going to go side. And then I'm going to... Kick, like I'm kicking a soccer ball, side. My knee is back, side, and side. Now, if you have knee issues, this is a lot of instability on that knee. Easy does it. This may not be for you, okay? May not be for you. Any pain, stop, okay? There's other reasons. There's other things you can do. Okay, now from here, I'm going to add... Um, that was uh, number six. The next one is called step ups with a knee up. Now we're talking about dynamic. Step up, knee up. Step down. Step up, knee up. Hold it. Step down. So now I'm trying to get a dynamic move, a lift, and down. 
step up and down, okay? This is really working the glute of my balance leg. Now I'm really working glute on that. Before I was working a lot of quad, you'll feel the difference, okay? I'm, I'm out of the ankle now, now I'm more in my glute. Same thing with my side step, number eight, okay? I step up and then I step down. I step up. So this is a dynamic move. You might want to hop up. Whoa. <laughs> you might want to take a little hop up. Okay, make it dynamic. Hop up. You can add arms. You can add a punch. You can add a crossover. You can make it a little different. You have that hold. Okay. And then step, uh, rotation. So if it's still the same leg I'm working on, right, I'm going to rotate up and down. This is hip. Up and down. I like rotation curtsy lunges. This will help you practice for that knee stabilization. Yep. Whoa. And you're going to lose it. That's okay. Don't freak out. Come up and down. Up and down, okay? Ten of those. Okay, number ten. We're finally getting to the end of this. It's called the starfish, okay? So I step up. I go out to the side. I go back. I swing up. I go out to the side. And I go back. Step up. Whoa. <laughs> Have fun with it, guys, okay? I step up, I hinge to the side, and I go back. You can add a kick forward, side, and back, forward, side, back, forward. You get it, right? Lie on the hip. So, yeah, okay, thanks. I'm glad you like this, Barbara. So that was just one side, and so, 10 reps is what I'm suggesting. I showed you about three. You're gonna rinse and repeat other side. Now, I'm gonna show you just a little bit on the Horizon Balance Trainer, because I did want to include a little bit of that and take my shoes off here. And I'm gonna come down. I think I'm gonna switch my cameras, guys, to my other camera. So give me a second. Yeah, let's see if I can get on that you can see the balance trainer better, yeah. I can tell you, my hips, whew, some good stuff. Make sure you stretch out after this. Okay, so with the balance trainer, okay, I love this because it's got a nice uh, textured surface to it. Let me make sure I can give you a little angle here because I'm on my computer. That helps. Hold on, hold on. This is probably the longest live I've done in a while. I hope it was worth the while for you guys. Okay, balance trainer. Okay, you could be kind of like me. I like to be really organized and have my foot here. So I'm gonna do my right leg on this. Okay, we're gonna step up, tap, and down. Up, tap, and down. So this is more a dynamic walking move, right? I got I'm not looking, I have to find it. Up and down. Now you can do this on your arrow step, your arrow flex, I mean. So you practice the unstable surface. Same thing with side to side. Okay, so I can side step. Up, up. Now, you can go slow or you can make this a hopping move. Up, right? You can always add a knee up. Knee up, whoa. Side step, knee up, side step. You play around, okay? And then lastly, and then we're gonna close with this star step, okay? This is the one I really wanted to show you. Okay, front, side, side, diagonal, and back. Okay, now if you can do it tap down, diagonal, 
side, diagonal, and back. Awesome. Now stand there and see if you can go front, side, or side, diagonal, and back. Maybe you can hold on, or not hold on to anything, <laughs> and have fun with it. Okay, I'm having enough fun. All right, there you go. Okay, guys, I don't know if you saw all that. I hope everything is my seat. Oh, that was fun. <laughs> I've been on for an hour, so I've taken up a lot of your time, but I hope it was helpful. Please um, just go through the first half hour one time, listen to this video, then fast forward and hit that probably 35 minute mark to where we started in the training. I'm gonna put this uh, workout that I did or this program in the chat box on social media on our Instagram. Um, I'd have to use a prop, maybe welcome post. Yeah, definitely, you know, use, use props to start, okay? Stephanie, take your time, go slow. Find your balance, one hand off, other hand off, maybe keep fingers on. It's okay. I mean, I, again, I I do this training a lot. It, the, the whole point is you're practicing with a, a mindset that you're improving your balance, okay? And I, I went rather quickly the last few moves because I know we're kind of running into the next hour and I didn't want to go that long. But take some time, breathe with it. Make every move a breath, Um and I would love to hear in another couple weeks how you've improved, what you've noticed. You might notice in your walking, your, your legs feel stronger, your ankles feel stronger. You might notice that you're catching your posture throughout the day. Put your hand on your heart, lift your, your heart up into your hands and find that alignment that you were designed, you were born with, that somehow along the way, we kind of lost. So Barbara, I'm glad this was helpful for you. Stephanie, thank you so much. Um, this was really important for me to for share with you folks. I'm going to be coming back um, on Saturday with the Surge Pro Vibration Foam Roller to show you some ways to improve your flexibility in your hips and the strength in your hips. So if you have the Surge Pro, uh, or even if you don't and you're interested in how you can use it, Come on, join me on Saturday. It'll be recorded if you don't catch it. But guys, it's uh, 5 o'clock. I know my husband wants to go grab something to eat. We were to catch a sunset on the beach. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day or week. Please share this video with anyone you know that's looking to improve their balance. Even if they don't have the Life Pro props, the, the tools that we use right now, maybe they'll, they'll end up getting it. <laughs> okay. Thanks, guys. Have a great day. Bye for now.